Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm working on the supercharged Grand Cherokee again. But I'll show you what I got and what I want to do. Today I want to start working on building the plenum for this or the tube for this to get over there to throttle body. This is what I had. Um, I had this all in a Ranger once. Well, an actual Super Coupe drivetrain and a little two-wheel drive Ranger. And this was here and it went to the intercooler in the Ranger and through and back in and over but this one uh, it's not gonna work so well for that right now I'm not gonna run an intercooler at all I'm just gonna get it hooked up and I'm gonna have to keep it pretty low I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna be able to you know keep keep the hood without having to cut anything or put a cowl or a bump in it or, or something I'd really like to it to be stealthy, but really doesn't matter. Boost is boost. So I'm going to work on cutting this piece up, getting all this chopped off of here, because the tube's going to have to come straight out of the side of it, which isn't going to be great for airflow, but I'll make it as tall as I can while the hood still closes. So we'll get to it. I've got the old tube cut off the top of this thing. When I built that range, I had very little experience welding. I remember right, I grabbed the wrong gas, and it was just torching it and doing weird stuff, and by the time I got that figured out, I swapped the gas and got it welded, but it was quite a mess, and then a buddy of mine filled this in with Bondo, which it started cracking pretty quick, because this thing gets really, really hot, but if I hadn't done this and just did it anyway, even though it looked like crap, I, I wouldn't be as far as I am today with welding and, and, and my knowledge and experience with things, so... So if you're ever working on something, if it doesn't work out quite the way you thought it would, or you're not that good at it yet, just do it anyway. You'll get through it, and you'll get better at it, and that's just part of it. But I'm going to get this shaved down, cleaned up. I think I can come back and kick around the fill cap. And also, I think that will keep, you know, the clearance on the hood. I'm going to zoom in there. I think if I can keep it coming back here, it can go around that, and then the hood will still close. I hope. I think. I guess before I go any further, we'll just see if that fits by itself. Come on, light. Kick on. All right. Oh, yeah. Uh, you really can't see in there that well. I've still got a couple inches. I don't know if it's hitting or not, but it will close. So, pop it open and look at it. Still sitting there, that's a good sign. Um, no real witness marks, so. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim the top of that and start working forward. The blower hat's pretty much done. It's a little crooked, but it's all right. I've still got to finish gutting the inside. It's mostly there. But I think this is not a 90. I don't know what this came off of or if it was trimmed. But I'll have to get some more boots. But this fits, and that should kick it right around the oil cap. And that should clear the hood. I kind of left it, I let it sink down a little more when I fitted this so that it would kind of get away from this part of the hood. But I thought I had more aluminum tubes already, and I don't want to wait. So I'm going to do something I'm not exactly proud of, but I think I'm going to go get some exhaust pipe to build the piece to go up and over. It'll be cheap and easy. I want to build an intercooler anyway, so it'll work for now. Couldn't really find what I wanted at the parts store to build the crossover tube. And since I want to tune it naturally aspirated anyway, at least to get it running, I'm just going to move forward with the fuel stuff and HP tuners. Now this is a SRT4 map sensor, I hope. That's what they sold me as an SRT4 map sensor. We'll find out. And I went to pull apart, got me a pigtail, so I'm going to get it wired in. And I've already got these injectors, so I am just going to solder these in, if they fit. i got to pull the rail and make sure they're actually going to fit. 
I make sure these are actually going to fit o-ring size and and height wise I think they might be a little shorter so um, yeah they're definitely definitely a little shorter and where these bolt down right here that's probably going to be the only problem I may have to bend those which is easier it looks like it's gonna be easier said than done so I can get the, the rail to sink in further I don't see where it would hit anywhere else or cause any problems so my pulley injectors out I'm gonna wire this in my plan is I think the newer intake manifold is better but I'll probably just run a hose to this I've done it before for now but get a block of aluminum weld it to this drill it for the o-ring and drill it to bolt this down the the gm2 bar map sensors are much easier to deal with i just i couldn't get one of those today so they had they had the srt4 map sensor at the parts store or hopefully it's a two bar two and a quarter bar map that's what i have in my dakota so i'm gonna swap the map sensor make sure it reads right hook up the hp tuners pull the program and start changing the scaling and see if those injectors are going to fit. I guess I'll show you my Dakota while I'm at it. This is my 99 Dodge Dakota with a giant hemi scoop. It's got an Eaton M122 off a of GT500. This is the factory kegger. I machined it down, made this giant plate, bolted it down. It fits pretty decent. Had to flop the pulley around to make the belt work, but but so far it works. And make an adapter. This is a factory M122 GT500 elbow, an adapter. This is like a tune port or LT1 style throttle body, so I could still use the automatic. The TV cables here. I had to weld the uh, I welded the bracket off of the Dodge throttle body onto there to make it work. And then I ran it with no filter for a while, and then I wanted to make an air box and figured I'd make a scoop or buy a scoop so that it actually have a filter. And what I did with this, see if you can see, you can't see it. I used the same SRT4 map sensor on this, and since it cuts the it cuts all your tables in half, so I used I doubled the injector size and then used the two bar map. So it actually started up just doing that. I had to tweak it, but it worked. It just needed tweaks after that. So yeah, put two bar map in, it cuts all the scale in half, and then double the injector, kind of puts it right back where it's supposed to be. So I'm hoping that will work with this. The injectors fit in the rail and they fit in the intake, but the length of them Come on. significantly shorter now I'm going to use these because like everything else like I already had that blower I've already had these injectors almost everything going on here is parts I've already had from other projects so they don't cost anything so I don't want to go spending a bunch of money these were for a GT500 5.4 with a blower the same blower that's on my Dakota so it's enough to support as much horsepower as this thing's going to make with that blower. It'll be enough to blow this thing up. So I'm going to make these work. I think all i got to do is bend these tabs up. Uh, I'm sure it's easier said than done. I'll probably have to cut them off and weld them. Which means I'll have to take this all the way off, clean it up, get all the fuel out of it so I can weld it. But it's not going to be the end of the world. It'll, it'll work. These ports are gross. Clean that crap out of there the best I can. Um, got a new plan. I'm not going to change these. I've got these adapters on my truck that go from, this is a EV1, to these EV6 style injectors. So I'll borrow those off my Dakota and I'll order some more. And you can get these caps. I looked them up. They're 40 bucks. They're, they're not real expensive. It just has another O-ring and extends it. I'm not going to do that. Would be the easier option for someone without a welder, but what I'm going to do, I figured out the difference in these two. 
and the depth of that hole. If I shorten, if I move these pedestals or these mounts half an inch up, it will push it down where I need it to. So I'm going to drill holes in this table and bolt it down. And then I'm going to cut one, one of these off at a time and put a half inch spacer back, you know, space it up, put a bolt through it and weld it back to itself. I'll do that on all four of these and that'll get my height set right. And then I don't have to worry about those adapters. I, uh, I don't know how most people are, but it's still bright out. I got a lot of day left, so I don't want to wait. It's going to take, it'd be like three days before they get here. I can do this in an hour, half an hour to an hour. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't recommend it unless you have a tape welder, but I do. So that's what I'm going to do. It didn't take too long. I just cut it off, moved it up, welded it back on. So that should make up for the injector length. Now I'm going to put them in and hopefully it'll bolt back down now that I've moved every one of those. These are the adapters I was talking about. So this should go on to there. That clips in. And then that clips on. And it's adapted. I've had these on the Dakota for quite a while and they work fine. So. I'm going to run with these and order another set for the truck. The injectors are in. The spacing worked. The adapters work. So far, this is the only problem with moving the rail like that. I can't get that bolt lined up. I'll have to take this off and bend it and manipulate it to get that lined up. But these ones are fine. And man, does it, it like gets real tight on this injector. So, things to keep in mind. It's not running right, but it runs. I've got the map sensor rigged up, and the injector's in. She's rich. It already runs better. I was checking the stuff on the scanner, and it was only reading 0.7 volts consistently, no matter what it was doing. And then the connector, this red wire, the pin was pulled back, not making connection. So I pushed that in and I had 2.1 2 volts sitting there in atmospheric, which is what about it, it, it should be about that. And now it runs pretty damn good with those big ass injectors. It's going to need some work, but the narrow band signals, it's kind of doing what it's supposed to do. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of bugs to work out, but it runs, and the cluster fixed itself. Well, that's all I'm doing in this video. It's running pretty good. I need to order some stuff. I need to order a blow-off valve, a recirculating valve, and some aluminum tube. I already have some couplers. I think on the next one... Hopefully I'll get that stuff in pretty quick so I can finish that and actually tune it with boost. It's running pretty good. I'm surprised that the uh, short-term fuel trims are so close. I still haven't looked up what size these injectors are. I just knew they were big and free. So, but Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll keep moving forward on this project. And Hopefully this will give you some ideas or what to do and what not to do on yours.